What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, blogging the boys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy. And I know there's been a lot of news when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys this week. Such is the way for America's team, who's looking to get to four wins in a row this week. The New York Giants coming to town, third game in a row for the Cowboys at home, hopefully fourth win in a row, as mentioned. And then after this, the Cowboys will travel to New England to take on the Patriots before the bye. A much-deserved break, and we'll obviously have some time to reassess this team, the roster, everything under the sun when it comes to the Cowboys. You know, we've talked about this Patriots game already a few times over the course of the offseason because it's the Patriots. Cowboys going to New England. This is actually the 17th game for the Cowboys this year. Uh, every NFC East team will play one AFC East team in 2021. Cowboys traveled to New England in 2019. It did not go well for them. Amari Cooper did not have a great game. And a big reason for that was cornerback Stephon Gilmore. We talked about this game because at the beginning of the season, Gilmore was placed on the pup list, which meant that he would be out the first six weeks of the season, which meant that the Cowboys would not be playing him when they traveled to New England. The Cowboys will definitely not be playing him when they travel to New England because on Wednesday morning, the New England Patriots released cornerback Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, uh, this is interesting. You know, obviously, it's been a hectic 24 hours or so with the Dallas Cowboys releasing Jalen Smith and now the Patriots releasing Stephon Gilmore. As Dallas Cowboys fans, we're wondering... When is the team going to go for this? All right, like, what's taking so long? Cowboys, what are you doing? Go after Stephon Gilmore. He remains one of the best defensive players in the NFL. In fact, he was literally the defensive player of the year during that 2019 season when he locked down Amari Cooper. We know that Trayvon Diggs is one of the best, if not the best, cornerbacks in the NFL in our current moment. In fact, on the same day that Stephon Gilmore was released by the New England Patriots, Trayvon Diggs was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week after getting two interceptions against the Carolina Panthers. And so, you know, it's fair to say the Dallas Cowboys should pursue Stephon Gilmore. And I'm going to say it. The Dallas Cowboys should pursue Stephon Gilmore. I know that they have Trayvon Diggs, but outside of that, they don't have a lot for us to really feel great about. They have Anthony Brown, another veteran presence. They have Kelvin Joseph, who will be coming off injured reserve hopefully soon. They have a lot of question marks, and Stephon Gilmore would go a long way at shoring up this defense and making them more well-rounded because we're still early in this season. Things are going to happen. We're going to go along, and having a talent like him opposite of Trayvon Diggs can make this Cowboys secondary one of the very best ones in the NFL. Now, we've talked a lot about Stephon here on this channel in the offseason because he he was somebody that the Dallas Cowboys should have traded for. In fact, he was somebody a lot of NFL teams should have traded for. His cap hit in 2021, prior to being cut by the Patriots, was only $7 million, which is a bargain for a player of his stature. Now, according to Justina Anderson, one of the NFL's top insiders, Gilmore's looking to make $15 a year on the open market. That sounds like a lot of money. I realize that, and I realize you're probably thinking, Cowboys aren't going to do this. That's a lot of money. Well, you know, Cowboys can do this. I know you're thinking they cut Jalen Smith. They're eating all this money, et cetera, et cetera. According to Jason Fitzgerald, the OG salary cap guru from Over the Cap, uh, I'm just going to read you his two tweets. One, if we assume that Gilmore wants $15 million, that would prorate out to $10 million for the balance of this season. If that is indeed the number, you probably would need $2.64 million in cap room to make that work possibly a little less, but that is the clean way to come up with a number. I like clean ways. Jason adds, the only teams that cannot afford him under that scenario would be the Saints, Falcons, Bears, Cardinals, Ravens, Rams, Dolphins, Colts, and Giants, though they could create cap room to make a move. I'm going to read this list one more time of teams that, according to Jason Fitzgerald, who can totally be trusted when it comes to salary cap information, teams that cannot afford Stephon Gilmore in our current moment in 2021. The New Orleans Saints, the Atlanta Falcons, the Chicago Bears, the Arizona Cardinals, the Baltimore Ravens, the Los Angeles Rams, the Miami Dolphins, the Indianapolis Colts, and the New York Giants. The Giants did spend a lot of money on their secondary in the offseason, but you will notice of the list that I read twice that the Dallas Cowboys are not on it. And so Dallas Cowboys, what are you waiting for? Pick up the phone. You know, the Cowboys are rumored to be one of the teams who are going to be interested in Gilmore, according to ESPN's Ed Werder. And why wouldn't they be? Again, the Cowboys have a defense that looks like it could be a top 10 unit in the NFL. They look like they might have the best cornerback in the NFL. Why not bring in Stephon Gilmore? We all believe that this Cowboys team has a lot of potential in 2021. People love to throw out the term win now. People like to talk about windows and things like that. This Cowboys team with a division that is really 
not good to be kind. Uh, have the, this Cowboys team has an opportunity to get to the playoffs to make some noise, and we all know that when they get to the playoffs and they want to make that noise, they're going to have to go up against elite quarterbacks. Well, you need to have an elite pass rush. The Cowboys have Micah Parsons and Randy Gregory for now helping along those lines, and Demarcus Lawrence is obviously going to return. And you have to have an elite secondary. They have Trayvon Diggs, but opposite of him, you know, we've talked. I wrote about this week at Blog and the Boys how Trayvon's interception numbers will likely go down because other quarterbacks will stop throwing at him and that means they'll start throwing at Anthony Brown more so you have to shore up that side of the defense if you're the Cowboys Stephon Gilmore is an incredible option that is suddenly one for you to be able to do that and you know when we talk about players like this players in situations like Stephon Gilmore they want to obviously get some money he wants to make 15 million dollars a year fine all that makes sense but we're in the middle of the season right now right this isn't the beginning of free agency and so Putting myself in that situation, although granted I've never been a former defensive player of the year on the market in the middle of an NFL season, but we've seen this story before. Players in this moment generally want to go somewhere where they can win. Stephon Gilmore's won a Super Bowl before, so he's not somebody who's looking for the first one, but every player obviously always wants to win the Super Bowl. But Stephon Gilmore isn't necessarily going to go somewhere that just throws the most money at him. He's going to go somewhere likely on a one-year deal and ultimately try to win the Super Bowl and then hit the open market again next year. And if you're the Dallas Cowboys, why not do that? Why not let Stephon Gilmore come in and be a mercenary for you? Just sign him for this one year. If all you need is the $2.64 million that Jason Fitzgerald outlined for this particular season, I mean, who thinks this is a bad idea? This is a great idea. This isn't necessarily something that fell on the Cowboys' lap, but the Cowboys appear to be a legitimate contender in this NFL season. Nobody can deny that. They have one of the best offenses in the NFL. The defense is even better than a lot of us hoped in our wildest imaginations. If you can add Stephon Gilmore to that, suddenly you're cooking with not just gas, but you're cooking with like the big tank gases that you see outside of grocery stores and stuff like that. Stephon Gilmore, I imagine, is probably going to you know, consider his options among the contenders in the NFL. The LA Rams, obviously not a team that can afford him as Jason outlined, but Justina Anderson, we mentioned her, already noted that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are expected to be in the mix for Stephon Gilmore. The Buccaneers did already sign Richard Sherman. I don't think that that necessarily will prohibit them from pursuing Stephon Gilmore, but it's worth mentioning that they already did do that. Stephon Gilmore likely wants to go somewhere where he can shine. He likely wants to go somewhere where he has a star cornerback opposite of him. Trayvon Diggs obviously checks that box. And he likely wants to go somewhere where he can win and not just win, but play on a big stage so that whenever he does hit free agency again, whether that's 2022 or 2023, he will still be remembered. A lot of people will know him. And there's no bigger stage than playing for the Dallas Cowboys. So in short, Cowboys, what are you doing? I know you're listening. Go sign Stefan Gilmore. Let's win the freaking Super Bowl. Let's have a good time. My name is RJ Ochoa. You know me, of course, from Blogging the Boys, bloggingtheboys.com. Here on the Blogging the Boys YouTube channel, please do subscribe. Also subscribe to the Blogging the Boys podcast network. We are available on all major podcast platforms. Let's cross our fingers. Stefan Gilmore, come to Dallas. We love you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See you next time.